Hi everyone, Byron Martin here along with MJ. And he is a coffee connoisseur. He has been growing our coffee plants, but he's also been harvesting and processing and roasting and drinking the coffee that's grown here at Logies. So today we're going to do a demonstration on brewing the coffee that we have here that he's made at Logies, and we're gonna see how it tastes. So we first start off with our beans which these are some that were processed. MJ has taken these, he's processed them, he's roasted them, and now we're going to brew it. We are. We're going to weigh out our beans. I like to use about 40 grams for this French press here. Got it down to a bit of a science. It's good to be accurate. Then we're going to grind it. I like to use a coarse grind for the French press so you don't end up with sediment in your cup. Yep. Wow, it smells good. This looks like a light roast. It is a light roast. I think you have a roaster I specifically do. for that. I do have a roaster. You can do it with a popcorn machine. It actually works pretty well. It's a little bit more nuanced. You have to really pay attention. Right. The automatic roaster is great. Yeah. So here we have a coffee tree. This is one actually that um, MJ has been taking care of. And in order for one to get coffee, it has to be pollinated. Right. And so how do you do that? We generally keep a paintbrush in each variety because um, we don't want to end up with any cross-pollination because no. we generally use the most for seed, Yeah. right? So we want to make sure we have the correct variety. So we take basically take our, our paintbrush, we collect a little pollen, and we go from flower to flower, and we essentially spread that pollen around and yeah. pollinate Yeah. And you've pollinated this just recently. So these flowers have been going by for a day or two. The flowers only last for maybe two days, maybe even less. So it's a very short-term blooming cycle. And they're also fragrant. So when you're working them, you can actually smell a delightful fragrance that comes off of them. Also, this tree is showing us a lot of buds. Right, a lot of buds coming along. And, yeah. And a bit of fruit set from where they were pollinated before. Yeah, there you go. Like and so um, that's how long it took. It took almost an entire year cycle to get us from the flowers to where we can harvest the beans. How are we doing here with our coffee? We do we have, do, do, our water up we have hot water. So I usually like to give it a nice little bloom to try to get all those aromatics. Usually let it sit for just a minute or so. You can see all that crema forming on there. This is kind of exciting because you know most of us get up every morning and we just dump our coffee in and we make it and we don't even think about the whole cycle right. of where it comes from. Like after you've picked the cherry, right, then what do you do with it? The first thing you want to do is you want to float them um, because if you have any that sink, they tend to be either rotten or uh, immature fruit. So you float them to try to get rid of any of the, the imperfections. And then once you get to that point, there's a few different ways to process it. But what I like to do is actually go through a fermentation process where you let the cherry sit overnight in water. Another thing it does is it, with the skins and pulp the, on them. With the pulp on yeah. them still, um, it helps them break down the enzymes, makes it much easier to peel. Okay. So you can do that. And then the next step would be to drain the water out and you can either pulp them right at that moment, or you can go through a second form fermentation, which you le essentially leave them for another night in the water. And they essentially start to break down a little bit, hmm. but it really brings out some of the sugars. Yeah. And so if we take one of these cherries and we pop it open, whoops, they pop out pretty easy. There's our coffee bean, yep. which, you know, it looks like those, except there is a husk yeah. on the outside that has to be removed. There's a, what's called a, a gray skin. So there's a, you need to dry them in order for that gray skin to come off. Yeah. Otherwise you really end up with a lot of bitter notes in your coffee. Yeah. So after you get to that point, then you go through your drying process. Okay. So after the fermentation in the cherry, then we husk them like this. We husk them like this and then we dry them. And then we dry them. We dry them yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and then that, that gray skin breaks, peels off very easily. But do we do that by hand or how do we get it to come off? We on? do it by hand. Okay. Um, the coffee industry has a husking machine. Okay. They basically throw it in there and it's like basically like a big food mill. Oh, okay. Separates all those, those husks. Now I had heard that they heat up that seed and it pops. So that is a whole nother step. So the next thing that you do after you get those removed is you, after they're fully dried, when you go to roast them, they're, they, they crack open and it just, 
it's what's called a parchment, another layer on the outside of that bean. Okay. Yeah, so that, that parchment comes off easily when you when you roast them, but it is nothing short of an explosion. Okay, so yeah. that's why we're probably in the oven, we'd have it popping all pop, over the pop, place. Pop all over the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. Well, the popcorn popper maybe is where you need to go if you don't right. happen to have a coffee roaster. Yeah, okay. All right. So yeah, let's, uh, let's add some more water there. Yeah, so that's quite a process. And actually, the cherry actually has a pulp on the inside of the skin there. It actually has some sugar in it, yeah. and um, it's got a bit of a funny aftertaste to it, but you certainly can eat it. It almost has like a, a green bean kind of flavor to yeah, it. Yeah, it definitely does. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to let that sit for a few about, minutes. Right about five five or six minutes. Yeah, okay. Optimal. All right. After we have fermented them, dried them, de-skinned them, they go into the roaster or the popcorn popper. Right. At that point, we are kind of trying to figure out how much roasting we need. Right. Whether we're on a light roast or a dark roast, or we're going to ruin them. So there's a, there's generally two steps. They call the first crack and the second crack. So, so what it sounds like when you heat, start to heat them up, once they hit about 400 degrees, they do their first crack. 400 degrees? 400 degrees. So that coffee bean will actually split, and you'll hear it audibly. So that's why they call it the first crack. Yeah. And then... If you get to the second crack, that's just about a medium roast. And if you go any further, that's what they call a full city plus, which is your your Vienna roast, really dark, greasy. Yeah. So you can take it a little bit further, but there's a very fine line between that bitter and, and ruined. That and ruined, yeah. 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 So and I guess the dock of the roast, the less um, acidity you have. Less acidity yeah. and also the less caffeine. Okay. The, gr the yeah. lighter the roast, the higher the caffeine content. Okay. So uh, if you want to buzz, light roast. Light roast. Yeah. Yeah. And our coffee plant here, you can see how beautiful it is as it's almost like a Christmas tree. And this is its sort of natural form to it. And they are really great house plants. Coffee is often shade grown, meaning it can tolerate lower light levels. You know, they really can take some cool temperatures, but in the greenhouses here, they do better if we grow them at 60 degrees. Right. The nutrition on these is very important that we often will get um, edge burn or tip burn. Right. And how do we treat that? Uh, it's generally a potassium deficiency. Yeah. Um, so we will we'll add some potassium to our feed. Um, usually on a weekly cycle works for us pretty good. Yeah. It's kind of a confounding problem for people that grow coffee having that burned edge to the beautiful tree that you're trying to grow. And remember, it's a potassium deficiency or you have too much salt, that sodium chloride, in your water. If the plant ever gets too big for you, um, they do very well in pruning. Right. Yeah, you can chop them right down. You can take that down to this level right here, maybe two feet from the bottom, and it'll just sucker right out and go into another coffee tree, except you'll get more than one stem. You'll get multiple stems coming off of it. How is our coffee coming? Is it ready to press? It's pretty close. Let's give that a press. All right. Wow. This is afternoon. We're going to wake us up. Sure is. All righty. So here we go. This is Logi's coffee. Bottoms up. Yeah, it's good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, and there's not that much acidity to no, it. No, not too much acidity. Nice, nice balance. Yeah, nice and smooth. Yeah. Well, there you go, folks. There's an idea on how to make coffee and some ideas on how to grow it. And truly, it's a good cup. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, visit us at logies.com.